4b is about linear functions. More specifically, it's supposed to be about graphing linear functions, but there's some other linear function stuff in here too, just like if you have a couple of points to figure out what the equation would be and that sort of stuff. So it's really not all about graphing, but a linear function is one that where if you graphed it, you would get a straight line. Um, and the way it's typically written is in this format right here. So f of x equals mx plus b, where then m is your slope, b is your y-intercept. And you could write it as y equals mx plus b, but f of x, at least for a function, um, a lot of times is the preferred notation because then that emphasizes that y is a function of x. So really y and f of x are equal. Um, but for functions, usually you see f of x. And then x is the independent variable because then it can be anything in the domain, right? Like within the domain, it's free to vary. It can take any value. Um, and then y is the dependent variable because whatever you get for y depends on x, right? Like um, in the equation where you have the thing that's circled up there, the f of x equals mx plus b, m and b are going to be some numbers. And then for any value of x, you could sub that value in for where the x is and simplify it, and then you'll get the corresponding y value. So what you get for y depends on whatever you sub in for x. So that's why it's the dependent variable. And we're going to do some of that right now, some subbing in for x. So if we want to complete the rest of that table, number one, if f of x is 7x minus 2, I took the liberty of putting that negative 2 in there already because that's going to be your y-intercept. So you can just look at it and see that, right? And you go, okay, yeah, um, right? 7 is the slope, negative 2 is the y-intercept. Um, but you could also um, go ahead and do the computation. You could say, well, then f of 0 would be 7 times 0 minus 2, but then 7 times 0 is 0. So this is 0 minus 2, which is negative 2. And yeah, we got the same thing, right? So if you want to actually go through the computation to get the y-intercept, you can. The other ones, um, I think we should just sub in to get them. So we want f of 1. That would be 7 times 1 minus 2. So that's 7 minus 2, which is 5. So I'll put a 5 up there. And then f of 2 is going to be 7 times 2 minus 2, which is 14 minus 2, which is 12. Put 12 up there in the table. And then f of 3 is going to be 7 times 3 minus 2. So that's 21 minus 2, which is 19. And we'll put a 19 up there in the table. And we got it. So that's one way of doing it. There is actually another way of doing it. Um, if you think of the slope as being what happens to the y value when x is increased by 1, which is a legitimate thing to do. Most people think of slope as being like rise over run or change in y or change in x or that sort of thing. And those definitions are fine. But you could also think of it as what happens to the y value when x goes up by 1. And here the slope is 7. So positive 7, so it would be an increase of 7. Notice what happens. So from the y-intercept, we had a negative 2, and then x goes up by 1 from 0 to 1, y goes up by 7, right, from negative 2 to 5. And since we're going up by 1s with the x values from 0 to 1 to 2 to 3, then the y values go up by 7 every time, right, because 5 to 12, that's 7. 12 to 19, that's another 7. So um, you could also do it that way, um, and that would work. Uh, then with number 2, um, I guess if you wanted to, you could just jump ahead and say um, that for 0, you would have to get 6. Because if you rewrote that um, to where if you had the slope going first, so you could rewrite this if you wanted to as negative 4x plus 6. And then you'd say, oh, negative 4 is the slope, 6 is the y-intercept, so you just put the 6 right in there. That's true. You could do that if you wanted. Um, but I'm just going to write these out to where they're all just evaluating the function. So f of negative 1, going left to right, I guess we'd be starting there. That would be 6 minus 4 times negative 1. So 4 times negative 1 is negative 4. So that's 6 minus negative 4. But subtracting a negative is the same thing as adding a positive. So that's 6 plus 4. Or 10. Put a 10 up there. Then f of 0 would be 6 minus 4 times 0. Um, right, in order of operations, you got to do the multiplication before you subtract, right? So 
then you'd have six minus zero, and that's six, all right? That's what we got before. That's not really news, right? We already knew what that was. Um, F of one, that's gonna be six minus four times one. Once again, order of operations, you gotta multiply first, so that's six minus four, and then that's two, all right? Two goes up there in the table. And then F of two, it's gonna be six minus four times two, uh, four times two is eight, so that's six minus eight, which is negative two. And there's our table. And if you look at the slope, so our slope is negative four. So that would mean that if x increases by one, then the y value should decrease by four, right? Since it's negative, so it's gonna be a decrease. And look at what happens, right? Negative one to zero to one to two, we're going up by one every time with the x values. Then look at the y values. We go 10, 6, 2, negative 2. Every time we're going down by 4, right? 10 minus 4 is 6, minus 4 is 2, minus 4 is negative 2. So um, either way, I think, would get you to the right spot. Um, I think most people will probably do it just by evaluating the function at those x values, and that's what I would do too. But you could also do it um, by using that definition of the slope, and you'd end up in the right spot. All right. Um, the next couple of pages, so page two and page three, um, there's some background stuff. If you're comfortable with this, um, then you can probably skip over it. But I figured I would throw this in here just in case you haven't graphed stuff in a while. Um, then I figured it might be worth it. Um, so if we're going to plot some points, I guess that would be the first place to start. Then um, in your ordered pair, you're going to have x value, y value. So then um, the x value or x coordinate would tell you what to do horizontally, like to go to the left or go to the right. And then the y coordinate would tell you to go up or down, it would tell you what to do vertically. So uh, for x values, positive is to the right, negative is to the left, kind of like a number line. And then for y values, positive is up and then negative is down. So if you're going to graph 2, negative 3, like it says there, you'd go 2 to the right and then you'd go 3 down. Um, and then the four quadrants. So first quadrant is in the upper right where the X and Y values are both going to be positive. And then it goes counterclockwise. So quadrant two is in the upper left, um, three is in the lower left, and then four is in the lower right. And then we're going to plot some points. So, all right, if we're going to uh, plot negative one, six, um, then we're going to go one to the left. Um, so I guess I can, I can write this over here. So for A, it's going so you start at the origin right so if you're going to plot some points you would start at the origin and then you would go one to the left because of that negative one and then six up so we go one to the left six up we're going to end up here so there's a right there's negative one six um, and then for b we would Again, start at the origin. And then it's negative four, negative two. So the negative four, that would mean that we would go four to the left. And then the negative two would mean that we would go two down. So four to the left, two down, right there. So there's B, negative four, negative two. Um, C, I think I can fit that one on here as well. So it's 5, 1. So you would start at the origin again. And then the 5 and the x coordinate, that would mean you would go 5 to the right. And then the 1 as the y coordinate would mean you go 1 up. 5 to the right, 1 up, we're right there. So there's C, 5, 1. And then D, um, so it's zero, negative three. So I guess I can put it up here. So D, so you'd start at the origin. There's nothing to do horizontally. So I guess I'll just say no horizontal move, right? That's what that zero is gonna represent, right? It's not negative, so you don't go to the left. And it's not positive, so you don't go to the right. Um, and then that minus three, so zero would imply, I guess, and then negative three would imply that you go three down. So zero, negative three is right down there. 
So there's D. Zero, negative three. All right, um, so plotting points, and then the other thing is intercepts, because there are things in the, the homework for this section where um, knowing how to get the intercepts works in your favor. Um, sometimes that'll make the math simpler. So an x-intercept would just be a point where the graph intersects with the x-axis, and then a y-intercept would be where the graph intersects with the y-axis. So the th there are three x-intercepts here. And since that thing is in blue, I should use a different color. Maroon. All right, so then like here's one right here, and then here's one, and then here's one. So our x intercepts, there are three of them. So if I write them out as ordered pairs, you'd have negative two, zero. That's the first one. The second one, it's, it's supposed to be negative one, zero, even though it doesn't have the marking on the axis, right? It's halfway between negative two and zero, so it's negative one. And then three, zero, with the same kind of logic, it's halfway between two and four, even though the marking isn't there. And then for the y-intercept, um, perhaps a different color, uh, lime green, right there. Actually, it didn't come out too well. Dark green. There, looks a little bit better. Um, so for the y-intercept, that's going to be 0, negative 6. And I should mention that for a function, you can only have one y-intercept. Because if you had two, the y-axis would fail the vertical line test, right? Because then you could draw a vertical line through and it would hit both intercepts, and that would be a problem. Um, it can have a bunch of x-intercepts, though. So this thing that's there in the graph, that's actually a function, right? There's no vertical line that's going to intersect that twice. It's okay to have a bunch of x-intercepts, but at most, a function can only have one y-intercept. All right, so then the other thing that's on this page is how do you graph an equation by plotting points? Well, if it's a linear equation or a linear function, if that's what you're going to graph, then you only need two of them, right? Two points are enough to determine a line. So what I would suggest is get the y-intercept because the math is easy. That's probably going to be the one with the easiest math. So I would get that one. Like, I always get that one personally. Um, and then just pick something else that doesn't look like it's going to be very hard. Um, for something like number five, um, it's sort of hard to see what I'm getting at. So let me scroll down for a second. Like with number six, things that I think would be harder would be ones that had fractions. So because that slope has a denominator of three, um, for my other point, for number six, when we get to it, I'm intentionally going to pick an x value that's divisible by three because then that way I'll get an integer, and then that way when I graph it, it won't be that hard to graph. So that one has some strategy to it. Number five kind of doesn't. You could just sort of pick whatever. But um, I would take the intercept first, um, which, I mean, if you can just look at it and go, well, the, the y-intercept's negative two, then that's great. But if you want to write it out, um, evaluating the function, so f of zero would be three times zero minus two. So that's gonna be zero minus two or negative two. So then that means that the point is gonna have an x coordinate of zero and a y coordinate of negative two. All right, that's right here. And then just pick something else, basically. Um, I picked one that seemed like the easiest thing, but also if you pick ones that are close together, then when you draw the line, you don't really have a lot of ground to cover in between, which I guess for the homework, it doesn't matter because you're doing it electronically. But for me, since I'm doing it by hand, that matters to me. I don't want to make the drawing harder. So three times one minus two, that'll be three minus two, which is one. So then the point that I'm going to have to graph would be x coordinate of one, y coordinate of one. So that's right there. And then I just need to draw in the line that goes through those two points. Um, let's see. That's tough with a tablet. This will probably look a little shaky. but I'll do my best here. All right. So it's not supposed to have that bend in it. Um, 
Right, that's supposed to be a straight line, which isn't entirely working out, but that's what I'm aiming for. Right, I'm just trying to draw the straight line that goes through those two points. Um, so that's pretty much it. Two points would be enough. You can have more than two points if you want them. Um, the next one, um, let's see, I guess this part probably could have been a little steeper because it's actually going to be negative one, negative four, but um, I think, or no, it's negative one, negative five. That's, that's what I was trying to say. Yeah. So yeah, it could be a little bit steeper, but I guess um, what's there is enough, right? You just really need the two points. So, all right. Next one, if we're going to get two points here. Um, again, I would go with the intercept to start off with. So like F of zero here, that's going to be negative one third times zero plus four, but negative a third times zero, that's just zero. So that's zero plus four, which is four. So then our point is going to be zero four. Okay. That's up there, right? It's right on the Y axis. Just go up four and you're there. Then the other thing that I would pick because of that denominator three, I'm not going to pick one. So I'm going to pick three because of that negative one third. So then I'll have negative one third times three plus four, but negative one third times three is negative one. So negative one plus four, that's three. So then it looks like the point that we're gonna get would be three, three. So that's here. Um, and just for argument's sake, um, I'll show you what happens. Like if you picked a one here, I think I've got enough room. If you pick a one, which I'm not going to graph this one. This is, this is kind of rough. It would be negative one third times one plus four, but negative one third times one is just negative one third. So it's negative one third plus four. Ultimately that's 19 thirds or I guess, um, Really what that would be is, um, so no wait, I'm doing that wrong. I did it as though it was a fifth, not a third. Um, that should be 11 thirds, not 19 thirds. Um, so 11 thirds, which would be three and two thirds. Um, so you can graph that if you want to, but it's easier just to do it with integers, I think. So that's why I picked the three. The three would work out well, so would six, so would nine, so would negative three, so would negative six, like anything that's a multiple of three. But I've got my two points, so then I just need to draw the line that goes through them. Let's see, this will be kind of a flat one. All right, kind of like this. All right, so there's zero, four, and there's three, three. All right, one more. Um, this one's easy. Graph f of x equals two. Well, you don't really have to simplify when you sub in and you don't even have to pick the intercept this time. That doesn't really help. You can pick whatever you want. So like if I just said, well, f of one, that's just two, right? There's nothing to sub in, you just get two. f of four maybe, that's two. F of zero is two. F of negative five is two. F of whatever you want to put in there is two. So I'm gonna have for my points, one, two, and then I'm gonna have four, two. If I just go with the two that I have written over there, um, and you're gonna get a horizontal line. So you're gonna end up with something kind of like that. Um, another way to write this equation, so I guess let me maybe do this in red or maroon or something. Um, so f of x equals 2 is the conventional way to write it, but it can be written as f of x equals 0x plus 2. Right? That would be correct if you really wanted to have the slope visible. Um, it does feel kind of redundant to have the zero X in there, but then you can see it, right? If the slope is zero, you get a line that's flat, right? Because then there's no incline or decline. It's just straight across. 
And that actually plays right into the next thing at the bottom of this page, which is the properties of the slope. And there are several questions about this in the homework for this section. Um, just here's the linear equation. Um, is it increasing, decreasing, or constant? And all you really have to look at is the slope. So if the slope of the line is positive, which would be like the one at the end of the last page, if I go up to it, um, right? that's got a positive slope, it's got a slope of three. Um, as you go from left to right, the line goes up, right? it goes upward. Um, so that's an increasing function. And that's what it says here, right? As x increases, y increases, or f of x increases. So the function is said to be increasing. So the important things here, I guess would be positive slope, increasing, and then negative slope, decreasing, which we can see in the first one in this page. If I scroll up to it, number six, we have a slope of negative one third. So that's negative. And then if you look at the graph, as you go from left to right, it's going downward. So that's decreasing. And then the third option is that if the slope of the line is zero, you get a horizontal line and that's where it's constant. There is a fourth option, but it doesn't show up in our course material. The fourth option would be what if you had a vertical line? Um, there the slope is undefined. Um, but then the idea of increasing, decreasing, and constant, like there's not really an analog for that. So that's why um, we kind of leave that one out. Um, but that is possible. And what those look like, because um, how the horizontal ones, it's just y equals some number or f of x equals some number. Um, the vertical ones aren't really functions. Like they're relations. Like you could have like x equals negative four. That's a relation, but it's not a function. It fails the vertical line test because the vertical line x equals negative four is gonna intersect it infinitely many times. So um, I guess that's another reason to leave it out of this section since this section is very based on functions rather than just relations. All right, next, slope. What if you had to figure out the slope? instead of just having the linear equation sitting there. What if you had points and you had to figure it out? And this is where the change in y over change in x idea makes sense. Um, or if, like from before, if you want to think of the slope as the change in y when x increases by one, or the change in f of x when x increases by one, that will also work. Um, and then if you have to get from just a bunch of points all the way to the equation of a line, you could use the point slope formula. You'd use two points to figure out the slope first and then use that slope and then one of the points to get the equation of the line. All right, so for that graph that's there in number eight, um, if you're gonna pick out points that are on that line, I would pick the ones that are obviously gonna have integer coordinates. So I would pick zero, one, because it looks like that's right on the number right there. And then anything else, it looks like you have to go way out. Um, looks like 6-6, six, six. that does it. So the points I've got are 6-6, six, six. and then back here I've got 0-1. Um, there are a couple of different ways that you could do this, um, and actually I didn't want to write 0-1 right there. Um, let me write it over on the left so it's out of the way, because I'm going to draw over there. So 0-1, there. Um, all right, well then... You could use the formula from up above. So like if you had your points of zero, one, and six, six. So then I guess you'd be thinking of these as like x1, y1, and then x2, y2. And then if you did the slope as, I guess, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, then you're gonna get six minus one over six minus zero. So that's five over six, and that is the correct slope. The one thing I'll say if you're gonna use that slope formula is be consistent between the numerator and denominator. And what I mean by that is start with the same point. So notice how here I started with y2, so then I started with x2. Um, if you start the other way around, like if you start with y1, then you're gonna have one minus six on the top and then zero minus six on the bottom, because you gotta start with the same point on the bottom. Um, if you're not consistent with that, you'll get the negative of what you're supposed to get. Um, but the other way to do it besides using the formula is you could use the graph. So like, I'm just gonna put in some dotted lines here. I'm gonna make one there and then I'm gonna make one here. 
So the horizontal one coming out of that lower point. And then, so this horizontal distance, we're going from zero up to six, so that's six. And then this vertical distance here goes from one up to six, so that's five. And you could say, well, this is clearly positive because as you go from left to right, that line's going upward. So the change in Y is five and then the change in X is six. So if you want to think of it as where M is the change in Y over the change in X and just pull it right out of the graph, you can do it, right? Like you just have to kind of make this triangle shape and then you can say, okay, well, it's a change in Y of five, change in X of six, and you do get the same answer. Um, if you don't have the graph sitting there, like a number nine, then you're probably gonna end up using um, the formula for the slope. So here, I guess, and I'll just use a slightly different color for this next thing I'm gonna write in. Um, I guess if you wanted to think of it as being like, here's X1, um, y1 and then here's x2 y2 then what we'd have for number nine um if we did it as and i'm, I'm going to go the other way this time and say what if it's y1 minus y2 over x1 minus x2 so i'm going to start with the first point this time instead of the second um, just to kind of change it up but then we'd have two minus negative one over uh, negative four minus eight so 2 minus negative 1 is the same thing as 2 plus 1, right? And then negative 4 minus 8 on the bottom. I guess we can't really adjust that right now. But 2 plus 1 is 3. Negative 4 minus 8 is negative 12. So you get 3 over negative 12, which you could rewrite with the negative out front. But then 3 and 12 have a common factor of 3, so that fraction actually reduces to negative 1 fourth. All right, um, and then one more. Um, so that last one, same sort of idea. Um, what if we have two negative one and then four three? So we can, I think we can do the same stuff. And then we'll say, well, if it's gonna be y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, then we're gonna have three minus negative one over four minus two. Right, so same order on the bottom. I'm starting with the second point. Since I started with the second point on top, right, I had that three. So then I gotta start with the four on the bottom. So this will be three plus one on top, and then four minus two on the bottom. So on top, that's gonna be a four. On the bottom, that's a two. Oh, look, we're gonna get an integer, since four divided by two is two. So, all right, I think that's pretty much the idea if you've just got a couple of points and it's figure out the slope of the line that goes through these two points. All right, um, well now, what if you have to graph something? All right, so if you have to graph a line um, where you're given a point and then you know what the slope is. All right, so we know that point is gonna be on it. So we might as well go ahead and graph it. Negative one, two, that's right here. All right, one to the left and two up. So what I'm gonna do here for, how would I get a second point? Um, I always think of it like this, that if the slope is two, that's the same thing as two over one, right? But then I have it written where it's a, a fraction, so I can think of it as change in y over change in x. So um, if you think of it that way, where then this would be equal to the change in y over the change in x, then a positive two means that we should be going two up for the change in y, and then a positive one means we should go one to the right. So if I do that, so if I go one to the right and two up, I'm gonna end up here. And that works. Um, I guess you could also go the other way and like go one to the left and two down. Um, if you thought of two as being negative two over negative one, that will also work. The point that you'll get is this one, and you can tell that that's right on the same line, right? So that would also work. It would be weird to do it like that, um, right? That's an unusual choice, but you can and it will work. Um, 
can I get this one to look any better? Uh, slightly, maybe. Yeah, something like that. Anyway, there's zero, four, and then here's negative one, two. So there's our line. Um, and then 12, we can kind of do the same thing. We're starting with the same point. I just wanted to have a different kind of slope here. So we know the negative one, two is on there. But if our slope is negative four thirds, if you want to think about it where it's broken up into the two movements that you have to do for, to get from one point to the other point, just stick the negative with either the numerator or the denominator. So you could do it like this and say it's negative four over three. And then if you think of that as being change in y over the change in x, then if the change in y is negative four, that means you gotta go four down, right? Since negative um, is gonna be down for y, but then three for the change in x, that's gonna be three to the right. So we can go three to the right, and we go four down, one, two, three, four. It looks like we're here. So it looks like we're at two, negative three. Or no, two, two negative two, sorry, I can't count. Um, the other way to do it, and this would also work, is if you said, well, what if it was four over negative three? Well, then you'd have four up and then three to the left. So you can also do that. If I go three to the left, so one, two, three, and then one, two, three, four up, you end up, let's see, it looks like up here. And that will also work. I mean, you can tell all of these are gonna line up. Um, see, I got a lot of ground to cover here. Drawing this thing in. Close to what I wanted. Something like that. Um, right, so there's our second point of two, negative two. Um, there's the negative one, two that we started with. Up here is negative four, six. And if you look at those points that are there, um, it, just going like left to right, I guess kind of downward to the right, then y coordinate goes down by four every time, x coordinate goes up by three. So yeah, we're getting the negative four thirds. All right, then 13, um, finding the equation of a function passing through a point with a given slope. This is where you would need the point slope formula. So, so the point slope formula, which is um, that if m is your slope and then uh, x1, y1 is a point, it looks like this. So y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. But we know what we've got. m is negative 2, and then here's our x1, y1. So then if we sub in, we'll have that y minus 5 is equal to negative 2 times x minus negative 3. But subtracting negative 3 is the same thing as adding positive 3. So we'd have that y minus 5 equals negative 2 times the quantity x plus 3. And then I guess we have to distribute the negative 2. So you'd have negative 2x and then minus 6, right? Because negative 2 times positive 3 will give you the minus 6. And then I just have to get the y by itself. So I'm just going to copy that last line and then do it. So if I add 5 to both sides, that'll get the y by itself. So then we're going to have that y equals negative 2x minus 1, it looks like, right? Since negative 6 plus 5 will be negative 1. And then to write it in function notation, f of x is negative 2x minus 1. There. I suppose that would be the final answer. And then 14 basically do the same thing. Uh, it's just that the slope is a fraction this time. So, all right, well, we're going to start in the same place where you have y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. And if we sub in, so the y coordinate's 4, so we're going to have y minus 4. The slope is 7 fifths, 
and the x coordinate is 1, so I'll have x minus 1. Same thing, distribute the slope on the right side. So 7 fifths times x would just be 7 fifths x, and then minus 7 fifths times 1, which is just 7 fifths. And you want to get y by itself, so you would add 4 to both sides to get there. So then we should have that y is 7 fifths x minus 7 fifths plus 4. But then for the intercept, we're going to have to get a common denominator so we can combine those two constants together. So that's what we're going to have to do with that. Um, so we're going to have 7 fifths x and then minus 7 fifths. And the common denominator would be 5, right? Because the denominator of 7 fifths is 5. The denominator of 4 is just 1, right? Because you can think about it as 4 over 1. So if you multiplied 4 by 5 over 5, it would be adding 20 over 5. And then you can actually combine them. And you can say, well, then we have 7 fifths x. And then negative 7 plus 20 is 13. So plus 13 fifths. Or to write this in function notation, f of x is equal to 7 fifths x plus 13 fifths. All right, so there, I think we've got it. All right, then 15 is one where I guess we have to do all the steps because we got two points. Um, so it says that f of negative 2 is negative 9 and f of 1 is 3. So the thing to do, I think, here is just to say, well, then those are points. Right? Like if you were going to graph those, you would graph them as points. And our two points are negative 2, negative 9, and 1, 3, right? Because if f of 1 is 3, that's telling us that the point 1, 3 is going to be on the graph of that function. And so is the point negative 2, negative 9. But if we have the two points, we can get the slope. So then the slope, so I guess I'll do first minus second. So y1 minus y2 over x1 minus x2. Then we're going to have negative 9 minus 3 over negative 2 minus 1. So negative 9 minus 3 on top, that's negative 12. Then on the bottom, negative 2 minus 1 is negative 3. So negative 12 divided by negative 3, positive 4. All right. Well, then we need the point-slope formula. And for the point-slope formula, you can pick whichever point you want. They're both going to work. I would pick the 1, 3 because that looks simpler. The numbers are closer to zero and they're both positive. So to me, that feels simpler. So then that's what we're going to do next. So we'd have, so y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. And I'm going to use the 1, 3 as the point, but you could use the negative 2, negative 9 if you really wanted. So I'm going to have y minus 3 equals 4 times x minus 1. So then y minus 3 equals, if I distribute that 4, I'll have 4x minus 4. And then, let's see, I think I just have to add a little bit here. So we got y minus 3 equals 4x minus 4, and I want to get the y by itself. So we'll add 3 to both sides, and that should do it. And we'll get y equals 4x minus 1. So to write it in function notation, f of x equals 4x minus 1. And that would do it. So that's the one where we had to do everything. Um, and that does show up in the homework, but they tend to look more like number 16, where you're given a whole bunch of points rather than just here are two points, figure it out. Because number 16, you could do two different ways. You could get the slope and then use the point slope formula. Um, or you could do it like this, and you could say, well, we know what y value we get when x is 0, so from that first column with the numbers in it, we know what the y-intercept is. So the y-intercept has to be the point 0, 8, right? Because by definition, the y-intercept is the point where x is 0. And then could we figure out the slope? Sure because we could do, like pick any two consecutive ones because the x values are just going up by one every time. 
So like, what if you just picked these two right here? X goes up by one, Y goes up by three. So it looks like here that the slope is three. There, I'll put the word slope in there too. Because then that's saying that if, if X increases by one, then Y increases by three. And if you do it this way, you're basically done. Because you know what the slope is. You know what the y-intercept is. So then your function is just like how generally it looks like this, where it's mx plus b. We know what m is, and we know what b is. So our answer would be that f of x equals 3x plus 8. Just using the fact that now we know the slope is 3 and the y-intercept has a y-coordinate of 8. And you'd be done. And that is the right answer. The other way to do it, so I guess if I use a different color, um, you can do it the way that we did 15 if you want to, where then you would say, I guess I'll do this in brown, that the slope would be 11 minus eight over one minus zero, if you use the same points that I have in that box up there. So then the slope is three over one, which is three. And then if you use the point slope formula, um, I guess I would probably use the zero eight for this. Um, so then you'd have y minus 8 equals 3 times x minus 0. And so then that would be y minus 8 equals 3x, right? Because x minus 0 is just x. And then if you added 8 to both sides, you're going to get that y equals 3x plus 8. And then you just rewrite it with f of x in place of y, and you get the exact same answer. Um, so either way will work. They'll both get you to the right spot, so I guess whichever one feels more natural would be the right way to go. Right, they're both going to work, so um, pick the one that feels comfortable or feels easier, right? That's the idea. Um, and then the last one, finding the equation of the line that's in that picture. A while ago now, but in this video... I said it helps if you can pick out the intercepts. When you're given a question like this, and these show up in the homework, um, if the intercepts have integer values, there is no reason not to use them. So what I'm looking at here is 0, 3, the y-intercept. Right? I want that, and the x-intercept is 2. Right? So my points are 0, 3, and 2, zero. Um, so then the y-intercept, it's right there. It's zero, three, right? So the y-intercept is the point zero, three. And then if you want to get the slope, um, you could do it using the formula, but I'm going to do this one using the graph just to show the other way to do it. So again, I'm just going to draw in the dotted lines here. And we know the slope should be negative because as you go left to right, the line goes down. So like if you were gonna get from zero three to two zero, um, like this is three and then you have to go over two, but really it's probably better to think of that three as being a negative three because you go down, right? If you were going from zero three to two zero, you go down and then you go to the right. So then the slope if you think about that, so the slope, which would be our m, if you think about it as the change in y over the change in x, then the change in y is negative 3, and the change in x is 2, so negative 3 halves if you bring that negative out front. So then that would mean that f of x would be negative 3 halves x plus three, since negative three halves is our slope, and then three is the y-intercept. So you can do it that way, or if you wanted to just take the two points, figure out the slope, and then use the point-slope formula. Um, if you use the point-slope formula with the, with the point zero three as your point, um, you'll get to that answer really fast. Um, but I wanted to do it a, a little bit differently, 
because there are multiple ways to end up in the right place. So you could use the formulas like we did the last time, or you could use the graph. So when the graph is sitting there, that gives you more options. So right, like with 17, you could do it with the graph, you could do it without the graph, they're both gonna work. So it's nice when the graph is there because that gives you some extra flexibility, I think. But that should cover everything with the graphing of linear functions in 4B.